Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. And today we are taking down the damn tree. <laughs> I am so tired of the stupid tree. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing the Enecro cheese strat here. And um, I actually have not beaten this tree yet. Uh, I've only gotten a B rank on it. And um, basically, all right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna explain my strat for those of you interested. And then I'm gonna explain why the tree frustrates me so much, okay? So this, I'm commentating over pre-recording, so I'm free to commentate. I don't have to concentrate or anything here. Um, but basically what this strat is, is Enna Crow, when you use Omega God, is so overpowered because it's like 500% of her base stats and then like 300% overflow. So it does just like insane damage, right? And so when you combine that with a really high force multiplier, you do insane damage. So basically the strat here is we power up and... We use Hope's FR, and Hope's FR in particular is very good with Enacrow because Hope does non-damaging attacks that buff it by 125% per turn. And so what you do is you just eat up like five turns of Hope just buffing it by 125%, and you get it over like 800%, and then Enacrow takes like basically three to four turns with 60 mil launches and like the boss is toast. And the whole idea is that we basically can skip the last 19%, which is the part that really frustrates me about the boss. So here's the thing. I'm someone that like, sure, garbage time is fine. Like I, I don't mind easy content, but I do believe we need hard content in the game. So yes, stuff like this is good. That is hard and challenging. The problem I have is when the fight is so restrictive, it almost requires a certain character. Now this isn't as bad as say, LD Quistus was probably the worst um, because it literally required you to like delay by like, four turns or something which like only she could do right or you had to do like aoe delays it was something that like at the time it was basically if you didn't have quistus it was darn near impossible or you had to do like some real nasty cheese to beat it right this to me it's similar to that but not as bad but i still felt like you know obviously the fight is going to push range but it pushed range like a little bit too much i feel like in the last 19 percent it has too many gimmicks if it had like one less gimmick then I could maybe be, like, I think it would be more reasonable. The problem under 19% is, one, you can only damage during a launch. So that's pushing for Reigns because he has that big launch finisher. Two, they lock their turns. So you can't push them back or delay them. And that's really hurtful during that because it, it, they have high turn rate. <laughs> so typically what happens is they're taking a bunch of frame turns. So that even if you are launching with, like, a selfie call, you can't get enough actual, like, you don't have characters that can join in the launch. So they're pushing reins for the turn manipulation as well as the launch finisher, right? And so that's a big problem. And then the other thing is, is like even with all of that, like I could deal through it, like I could tank. But then on top of all that, they have to do a turn, two turn paralyze to when they attack you. So then they're doing two turn paralyze and with the two turn paralyze, you basically sit for two turns and get killed. So it's such a struggle because even if you get a force time up in the last 19%, Without reins, it's so hard to get like just pure launch damaging because the initial attack does zero, and that's where the big damage usually is. So you're only getting the damage on the actual like follow up attacks. And once again, it's so hard because if you don't have turn manipulation, you can't get enough characters in front of it, and it's just such a pain. Um, so, and here's the thing I even did plenty of runs with reins, but I don't have reins FRBT. So, it. <laughs> It's really even mainly, it's not even just pushing Reigns, the character is pushing the Reigns F, rain FRBT. Because even when I brought Reigns in, it was great in the last 19%. I would have turn manipulation, I had his finishers, even though it was just impact strike, not seraphic charge, which is stronger. But I still felt like I could have got the fight done. But then once again, it's the pesky, like, you've got to let that, I mean, oh, here's the other mechanic I didn't even mention. It has the thing where if you take 10 turns, then it's invincible. So even if I'm using reins to try to turn manipulate in front of it and get my launch damage in, eventually I have to give it a turn, and then when I give it a turn, it two turn paralyzes me. I just found it so ridiculously frustrating. And I'm not like, you guys all know, I'm not like a super big brain default player. I'm not the the big theory crafter. Like I know people have done it like without reins before Enacro or whatever. But uh I I like Enacro, I'm gonna say this. This is very much a cheese strat. This fight deserves the cheese. Like, it's taken all the cheese. Because when a fight is that stupid restrictive, um, and I can cheese it, I'm definitely going to cheese it. Because, like, difficult fights are good and, like, fun and, like, feel rewarding. But when they're this frustrating, it's it, like, wasn't even as fun to play. And I tried this fight a lot. Like, I put 
hours into this fight. And I tried all kinds of different team comps. And, like, another thing is, is, like, yeah, then I want to try, like, a defensive team comp, right? Like, I feel like a defensive team comp could be really fun here. But then uh, they, they, they'll they still, like, paralyze you and whatnot, right? So it just doesn't work. And then a defense team comp, you can't do launch damage with that. So it just took away too many options. I just did not like it. Anyways, the fight at hand here. So all that I just talked through is pretty much set up. Just basically... Gaining Brave, getting our Force Multiplier. Now we went into Hope Force, and now you can see what we're doing is we're getting 125% per buff. So all we're doing is we're basically going to take this down to like turn 5 of Force. So even though we're not doing any damage here, it's fine, because Ana Crow covers all the damage up, just these huge nuke attacks, right? Now even doing this, I actually failed at this once, because if, if you don't time it right, if you put him below 19% before they're dead, then he goes into that launch mode and then you're screwed. So the idea with this strat is you want to get them in like the 20 to 27% range before your last attack and then the last attack finishes, right? Okay, so we're at 825 and we're going into Enna Crow. Now we're actually going to use a turn to get range to pull everybody forward and set up launching because that's going to uh, definitely help our damage here. So Reigns is, and this is still going to be really good damage for a call, right? Because we're getting all this launch damage, and then Reigns is still going to do the follow-up. So this here is going to do what? 15 mil. And that is going to be the weakest attack we see now, because now we're at about 876. Now Ender Crow is going to bust off basically three LDs, and we're out of here, right? So that's basically it. But here's the thing. I had to time my summon. So we're going to go through. So we have to Brave Attack here, and we have to Brave Attack here. So we're not getting the extra launch damage. But we just did a 63 mil launch. So that is what you call nuke, right? So he's at 52. Now, my last run, I made a mistake here. I actually summoned first and then attack. And that put him at 18%. And that was bad. So what I decided to do here is just attack again. And hope that he does not go below the 20% threshold, right? And I think I might even... Yeah, I brave attack here. And I might even brave attack here. Yeah, see, I brave attacked here just to be safe. I did not. So that was only 46 mil. But I did not want him to go below 20%. No, at 29%, this is a good spot. Because we're going to summon. Because I wanted to have room to do the summon damage and still not put him below 19%. So the summon damage is like a 6 mil AoE. 26%. Good. We're golden. Now it's just LD at 946%. At doing 60 million, this is going to finish him off. And we completely skipped that threshold. You can see uh, uh, Luna Freya triggering, triggering purple numbers there. And there you go. We finish off with a 65 million shot. And the tree is out of here. Get out of my face. I never want to see you again, you stupid tree. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Like, the rewards weren't even that crazy. All I got from this was, like, 100 gems and, like, a few tickets. So it wasn't like I was missing much. And I get the special frame around my summon, which is nice, too. But anyways, guys, there you go. Enna Crow's cheese in the tree. Uh, we just got treed. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.